Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to take you through a discussion on how you can avoid and basically eradicate joint pain. That is probably the number one injury that most bodybuilders are struggling with. You know, joint pain is everywhere and everybody's got it. And uh, especially the guys that, let's say, is over 40, when they into bodybuilding, they is very prone to joint problem. When we speak about joint pain, we refer to one of three types of injuries. Bursitis, tendonitis, and arthritis. All three of those can pretty much be avoided and eradicated. I'm not taking into account here those people that are genetically predisposed to joint problems. That is a different story, and obviously those people need to work very carefully with their doctor to find solutions to their problem. But for the rest of us, let's talk business. The number one approach on how to avoid uh, problems with your joints lies in the simple basis of correct training. Now, this sounds very simplistic, but let me explain exactly what I mean with that. To avoid joint problems, you need to structure your training approach into a three-month bowling phase and a three-month cutting phase and then continuously alternate between these two phases. A building phase is where you build the muscle, a cutting phase is where you maintain the muscle, not to build the muscle, and where you get shredded and cut the body fat down. Now during the cutting phase, that is when your body will now heal, the tendons will heal, the joints will heal. During the building phase, that is when you build the muscle. You train to failure on each set. A set must not have like more than eight reps. That is growth area, eight reps. And on that eighth rep, you need to fail. And every 14 days, you need to increase the weight by 10% as your muscles get stronger and as your body gets stronger. And continuously, for a whole three-month period, be in this process where you fail at rep eight. Now, in the building phase, that is now where you will grow. That is the growth principle, the failure principle on the eighth rep. That is how you grow. But this is continuous hammering of your joints and your tendons. And they can only take so much. So you will find that the closer you get to your three month periods, the more joint issues you will start having, you know, the more pains you will, will have after every workout. When you continue indefinitely with this approach, your body will break. Plain and simple. Your joints will become too sore to train. Your tendons will become seriously inflammated, your immune system will start going because your body cannot take this pressure and punishment day after day after day. That is why limited to a three month period. This is your building phase. Then after that three month period you will go into a cutting phase. Now the cutting phase that is where you cut down on the calories that you eat during the day. Regarding the exercises you bring the weights down with 30%. So let's say I did bench press 100 kilograms. Now you must do bench press with about 70 kilograms. You can even bring it down to 60. The more you bring it down, the better, but obviously you don't want to bring it down too much that your muscles start shrinking. I bring it down with 30%. Now on all the weights that I do, I bring the weights down with 30%. I increase the uh, reps now from eight that I did in the building phase to anything from 12 to 20. Around about 15 is what I do with most exercises in the cutting phase. Now this approach where you don't train to failure at all in the cutting phase, you do more reps with much lighter weights. This approach, that three month approach, allows your tendons, allows your joints and all the connective tissues there to strengthen and recover. And I speak from experience. I've applied this method and it is working wonders. Before I've trained in this specific fashion, I had severe problems with my, my tendons and my joints. Uh, this process of punishing your body for three months and then allowing your body to recover for three months strengthens your tendons, builds them up and heal them. And then after that cutting phase in that three month period, you will find that uh, when you start up with the building phase again, you're much stronger than you were at your previous ending of your previous building phase. Your tendons is now not just recovered, they are strengthened and your joints is stronger and your muscles is stronger. So this is a very, very rock solid approach for you not to just build muscle, but to keep your tendons and your joints very healthy. So that's the number one way on how you can train to avoid problems with your joints and your tendons. Just a short note on tendonitis. That is the inflammation of the tissue connecting the joints with the muscle. 
and uh, it's rather easy to, to, to treat it. You really need to warm up thoroughly. That is one of the key principles on avoiding tendonitis. Uh, make sure that you're, you, you've got a light sweat on your forehead and uh, when, that, when that is uh, happening, then, then your blood is flowing, your body is warmed up. But apart from that, whatever muscle group you're doing, you need to do a couple of light exercises just before you start with the heavy weights. You need to warm up that specific muscle on top of the fact that you've got a bit of sweat in your forehead from cardio or whatever other warm up that you've applied. Work out regularly. Don't work out just for once or twice a week and think you're going to punish your body in those two days. This is the quickest way you're going to run into tendonitis. You need to work out at least four days a week. And then a key principle which I touched on earlier is that you must not increase your weight sizes with more than 10% every two weeks. Doesn't matter how strong you feel, doesn't matter how much power you have or how eager you are, do not increase the weight sizes with more than 10% in a 14 day period never ever your tendons your joints and everything but especially your tendons needs time to adapt to heavier weights when you jump too quickly the tendon is not strengthened it cannot cope with that increased weight you're going to run into problems i guarantee you that that has happened many times to me in the past and the moment that i started to apply this 10 percent rule in 14 day period uh, was the moment that my tendonitis basically started disappearing. So please let this sink in. You need to stick to this rule. It is the number one rule to prevent tendonitis. Just a short note on bursitis. Bursitis is typically your golfer elbow and your tennis elbow uh, where the, the, the pain is in, the, in your joint of your elbow. Now um, that is also pretty much easily avoidable with uh, correct training uh, methods. The, the, the reason why undue pressure is applied on the elbow that ignites inflammation, that is because when you train, the moment that you bend your wrist down or up, that is placing undue strain on your elbow, and that is how tennis elbow or golfer's elbow originates. Now, just a few pointers on how you can deal with joint pain after exercise. Ice is the most straightforward solution. Um, Get yourself a piece of cloth, fold it with ice, plastic bag or whatever, it doesn't matter, and put it on the area that is sore. That prevents inflammation. Together with that, you can then take an anti-inflammatory. Uh, you can get it over the counter, talk to a healthcare provider. Uh, that anti-inflammatory, together with the ice that you put on, is a very effective method of um, basically healing the tendon, tendon that is um, inflamed and that is slightly torn or sore. But when the tendon is inflamed or sore, it is always wise to cut down a bit on your exercise. And with this treatment of the cold ice and the anti-inflammatory, allow it a bit of time to recover and heal. And simply put, avoid painful exercises. When you're particularly prone with a certain exercise to um, run into the pain territory, uh, cut that exercise out. There are many other uh, variations and many other options uh, and try and investigate and apply a new method of training or exercise. Okay, now supplements that you can use to treat joint pains, tendonitis and persitis. The number one supplement um, is omega-3 and omega-6. You get it in capsule forms and um, you can get it in naturally, uh, which is not a bad idea. That's like in avocados, uh, peanut butter, uh, or extra virgin olive oil, uh, coconut oil, and things like that. But the quickest and easiest way is probably to get it in via tablets. And that is an extremely effective approach treating your joints to ensure that they are very healthy. Super sizes has been shown to help joint pain. Glucosamine. Now, glucosamine is a natural substance. And in some of the studies that they did on glucosamine, they found that it even help treat joint pain more effectively than certain medic medicines or drugs. Other supplements you can try is MSM or chondroitin. Now just a word of warning, any supplement or anabolic steroid for that matter that in a short period of time quickly increases your power levels put you into real danger territory when we're talking about joint pains and tendon tears and things like that. Because any supplement that suddenly increases your ability to lift more weights, you must now remember that tendon or that joint hasn't gone through a gradual process of building up. 
to that level where it can cope with that amount of weight. Your muscle might now be able to have the power and to be able to cope with that weight, but that joint and that tendon is not built up by the fact that your muscle uh, uh, is now suddenly stronger. It's not built up, it's not strengthened, and that is where 99% of anabolic steroid users, for example, when they run into injury, that is usually what happens. They get a tear from the tendon or a serious joint uh, pain issue simply because of the extra strength that this anabolic steroid uh, or supplement has provided. Uh, one of the supplements that you can get that also gives you a rather great increase in power levels is creatine. My last point on uh, joint problems and joint health, when you're really into a situation where you got severe joint pain, then there is something, well, you can ask your doctor to prescribe to you. They call that deca durabilin. Now, deca durabilin is uh, anabolic steroids, uh, but lately they've approved it uh, to be subscribed for uh, severe joint problems or pains. And the fact is that uh, the bodybuilding crowd has basically found out in the past that this particular steroid is um, helping, uh, like oiling the joints, if you want to call it like that. And it takes uh, away a lot of the, the pain that they experience. And uh, now it is uh, available through your uh, prescription from your doctor. And it's also a very good lean muscle builder. So if you're in this situation, then that might not be a bad solution. Uh, you can get it legally from your doctor. Then you've got a reason to use it. It will uh, sort out your joint pains and it will also provide you now the opportunity for extra lean muscle growth. So um, everybody, happy training and cheers.